the defendant's in court. Uh, he's in street clothes. Uh, I'm going to bring the jury back in in a minute. The jury's out. Um, so stay ready with the next question or exhibit with this witness. Yes. All right, let's bring the jury in. Everybody can remain seated. Yes, Jerry's coming in. You can remain seated, please. <clears throat> All right, the jury's back. State's next uh, witness, or I should say, can, you can continue with this witness. Next question. Thank you. Uh, Detective, I just wanted to revisit just for one moment uh, the folding knife that we're talking about. Which pocket was that in of the victim's pants? It would have been the right front pocket. Right front pocket. And where was it in the pocket? I was completely within the pocket. When I observed it pulled out, um, medical examiner Crystal Green, medical examiner investigator Crystal Green had to reach into the pocket, pull it out, and when she pulled it out, it was folded. Okay. And I'm going to show you what has been marked as State's Exhibit Number 33. Does this have all the markings of everything that lets us know it's one of the items you inventoried? Yes. Okay. And opening up State's Exhibit Number 33, we pull it out. Is that the knife that was found inside the pocket? It is. Okay. Your Honor, the State moves 33 in evidence. Any objection? No. Was this the manner in which it was found inside the pocket? It is. Okay. Now, detective, <clears throat> we had talked about also how, right before we took a break, that Fusion Center had, had notified the homicide, look, we've got a, the incident on camera, we downloaded the portion of the incident and made it available for you guys. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So. Not even you guys asking for a certain portion. Fusion just says, we caught what happened on camera. We're going to give you copies of what happened. Yes. All right. And that was that night? Yes. OK. Now, I want to show you what has been marked as State's Exhibit Number 35. Your Honor, for the record, I have State's Exhibit Number 35 already set up to play on the computer. Fine. There is one video file on the computer, or on the exhibit, I should say. Now, detective, as we are looking at what we're basically seeing here, can you orient us for what we're looking at here? Yes, so this camera view is, is facing eastbound on Brady Street. The camera is mounted right at the intersection of to the north, it's Holton Street, where the bridge is. To the south is Van Buren. Holton and Van Buren are the same street. They just change names once they're on either side of, of uh, Brady Street. So this is facing east on Brady Street from Holton slash Van Buren. OK. Judge, objection, sidebar. No, overruled. We don't need a sidebar. Go ahead.
There's an objection. I'm overruling the objection. The state can proceed. Thank you. Now, just, Detective, to be very clear, these poll cams that we're about to talk about are kept by the Milwaukee Police Department. Is that correct? Yes. Um, and they're run by the Fusion Center, not by Homicide. Correct. In this case, were you the detective that actually got the first clips from Fusion? I was not. Uh, who was that? Uh, detective Michael Fidel. He's currently not available, is he? That's correct. Okay. Um, did you observe him as soon as he got them? As soon as he got them? Yes. I, I observed them relatively quickly after returning to the um, police administration building that day. Okay, so you're getting them that night? Correct. All right. And just, to, just so we're clear, um, the clips were taken by Fusion Center? Uh, yes, yes. What, can you explain what we mean by that? The, uh, so the Fusion Center saves a portion of the video outside of uh, the main, I guess, DVR, um, and they pr produced a DVD containing the video files um, that they turned over to us. They, just to be clear, is them stating, we've got this incident on camera, here you go, homicide. Correct. Okay. Now, detective, um, shooting scenes sometimes occur near pole cams, is that correct? Yes. Do you guys grab hours and hours of all the time that someone is on the scene when you're doing a homicide investigation? No, uh, typically the uh, relevant portion of uh, the incident is what we uh, save and record. Okay. And that would be, as we talked about, Fusion, putting it on a CD, giving it to you guys? Yes. Okay. Now, Detective, the, the video is kept for a period of time, is that correct? Yes. Uh, and in the pursuit of this case, you were asked to see if any of the rest of this poll cam was still available? Correct. Is it? No. How long is that kept? I believe it's 90 days at the most, but it's somewhere between 60 and 90 days only. And that would be from the incident? Yes, from, from the point that the, uh, the event is initially recorded. And in this case, um, that would have been a couple months before anyone is apprehended in this incident? Correct. Okay. Now, detective, I want to be very clear. When you guys are going to get it, did you specifically tell anybody, I only want this clip to this clip? I did not. You were asking for the incident? That, that's what was requested. I, I believe it was offered initially to, to our unit while we were in the uh, middle of the scene investigation. You guys are in the middle of the scene investigation. Someone says you have it on camera. They say, get it to us. That's what we got. Yes. OK. Now, detective, now coming back here to state's exhibit number 35. We can see here this truck, this Reinhardt truck. Is that correct? Yes. Um, what business establishment is in front of? It's Zana's Pizza. Okay. And if you were to go a little bit eastbound, staying on the north side of the street, what kind of really fancy building do we see right there? The next building uh, to the east is Casablanca Restaurant. Okay. And then as you're continuing to look down eastbound, we can see that there are a number of houses and potentially some businesses down there. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Now, detective, have you previously watched this video? Yes. Okay. Um, is it a fair and accurate copy of the video that was downloaded that night that reflects what happens? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, I'm going to play from one second into this video, and I'm going to stop at a few points and then at the end we'll just play it in continuation so that the jury sees it without stoppings right. so playing first of all from one second I'm just going to pause at 30 seconds into this recording. Basically, we've just seen traffic. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Now, I want to draw your attention here. 
this Reinhardt van, is that going to become important? Uh, yes. Um, what eventually are we going to see this Reinhardt van do? It's going to drive uh, westbound on Brady Street. And is it going to stop at the light? Yes. Okay. And at this point, have we even seen what is later determined to be the clearance vehicle come into to, to camera yet? No. Okay. We can see the area in front of Casablanca, right? Yes. Okay. And we can kind of see some headlights and some vehicles kind of down further down the area. Yes. Okay. To be clear, at this point, the vehicle that's later determined to contain the victim and his wife is further east of what we can see. Yes. And, and just so we're clear also, is there a time stamp and a time hack on this poll cam? There is. It's listed as Tuesday, September 22nd, 2020 at 7.47 p.m. and 30 seconds. Okay, so at 7.47 p.m., the victim's vehicle is not even visible on this camera. Correct. Okay. Not fully in there, right? Yes. Okay. I'm going to play from this portion of 30 seconds into the video. I'm going to pause at 38 seconds. What have we seen the Reinhardt vehicle do here? Uh, pulled away from the curb and started driving west towards the uh, intersection of Holton or, or Van Buren. Okay. And we're about to see some vehicles pulling up, some of which are important, some of which are not. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Playing from this portion at 38 seconds into the same recording. and pausing at 48 seconds. So we see that that vehicle that was directly behind the truck has kind of gone past it. Correct. Not the clearman's vehicle. No. Are we going to see the clearman's vehicle eventually start arriving from further eastbound? Yes. Starting and replaying from that same spot at 48 seconds. at one minute and three seconds into the recording. We're looking at it. Do you recognize the vehicle that we're seeing here? I do. Um, it was the uh, Kia Soul that was parked uh, near Mr. Clearman's body uh, on Holden Street during the scene investigation. Okay. And how many people do there appear to be inside the vehicle? I observed two on this video. <laughs> now, I want to be very clear. We're at 748 and four, we, did we see the clearman's vehicle come into view? Yes. This is when it first is arriving in the area of Casablanca? Yes. Okay. Playing from that portion of one minute and three seconds into the video. pausing at one minute and 10 seconds into the video. Detective, are we about to see in the distance something that's going to become important? Yes. What are we going to see? Uh, a black male riding a bicycle. Okay. And there appears to be kind of a vehicle behind him. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Playing from that portion at 1 minute and 11 seconds into the video. and pausing at one minute and 38 seconds into that video. What did we just see, Detective? Objection, Judge. This 
question asked the witness to speculate about actions or acts of the parties. There was a pretrial ruling that such evidence wouldn't come in. No, there wasn't. He's not speculating. He's testifying what he believes he saw on that video. Overruled. When we're looking up, what do we see in terms of what happens? So I observed the male on the bicycle approach the passenger, the front passenger side window of the Kia Soul, lean towards that window, and then punch the front passenger, who I know to be Jason Clearman, in the head area. To be clear, you can't tell any of the circumstances of what happens? Like, as to what led to this, is that correct? Correct. All you're seeing is what we see on the video? Yes. Okay. In particular, I want to draw your attention. Does the door kind of open after this person on the bicycle takes off? Yes. Okay. And in fairness, let's just make sure we're absolutely clear about this. After what appears to be consistent with a punch, the bicyclist keeps going, right? Correct. Now, I want to draw your attention. Right here, are we close to the corner of where Brady goes in the hole? Yes, within approximately one to two car lengths. Okay. Now, we can see this video goes on for another, what, minute and 20 seconds? Yes. Okay. Is there anything really of note that is visited on that minute and 20 seconds? Not that I remember. Do you have one minute left? You want it? Okay, I got it. I will play just that portion of it. And that is to the end of the video. Now, Your Honor, the state would move states exhibits number 35 in evidence. Received. Was there also a poll cam feed that captures what happens once everybody rounds the corner? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, I have placed state's exhibit number 34 into the big screen. There is also, oh, okay, that's not good. Let me do it again. There we go. Now, Take it off the interactive Zoom for right now. I have it set up on zero minutes and zero seconds into the recording. Detective, we previously had seen that Reinhardt van that had been basically stopped and then the victim's vehicle behind. Is that correct? Yes. All right, so we can see kind of now how close where we were looking at is to what we're about to look at. Correct. Okay. Playing from that portion at zero minutes and zero seconds into the recording.
and just pausing at five seconds into the recording. Detective, what are we seeing? Uh, the Reinhardt van has started to drive westbound, followed by the bicyclist that we observed in the previous video, also going westbound currently. Okay, and we can kind of kind of see what his clothing is. Is that correct? Yes, it looked like he had a white T-shirt on with a, a dark-colored vest. Okay. Now, <clears throat> playing from that portion at five seconds into the recording. Pausing at 10 seconds into the recording. Detective, what are we seeing now? Uh, the bicyclist has turned uh, northbound onto Holton Street and uh, is, is traveling north. And In particular, do we uh, now see a vehicle coming into <coughs> view? Yes, the Kia Soul uh, with Mr. Clearman inside of it. Playing from that portion at 10 seconds into the recording. Detective. Couple things that I would like to bring or talk about here. This area that we can see where there were two subjects but one has disappeared, is that the area where you found the victim's body? It is. Okay. And how many vehicles can we see are kind of pulled over um, in that area right now? Only uh, one pulled over at the curb line, the uh, Kia Soul that was on the scene when I arrived. And is there another vehicle behind? Uh, there's another vehicle behind it on Holden Street, nothing like directly behind it. Okay. I'm just going to come back just for one moment here. And if we're looking, just actually go back. I'm sorry. I'm going to go back to 13 seconds into the recording. We can now see the Kia Soul. And detective, I want to draw your attention and pause at 19 to 20 seconds into that recording. Talk about the clearance. Is there another vehicle behind it? Yes. Right. Playing from that portion at 20 seconds. Does it kind of pull behind the clearman's area? Yes, I, I apologize before, but the angle of this video made it, or the angle of this TV made it look like two um, vehicle, or one vehicle rather than two, as I was observing it right now. The vehicle that we saw behind the Clearman's Kia, so what does it do after the victim kind of disappears from view there? I believe it continued northbound. I'm also going to play at, continue on from 32 seconds into the recording. Detective, what are we seeing regarding the Clearman's vehicle? Uh, it has its uh, hazard lights on and is stopped near the curb line. And as we're pausing at 1 minute and 14, we can see kind of a, a red vehicle's made a U-turn and it's pulling behind it. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, I'm going to play that portion again. And in particular, Detective, I'm now going to use 
for the record, the effects and filter on this program, going to geometry, going to interactive zoom, and using the interactive zoom to zoom to the best we have with my technology. Can we see now a little closer <clears throat> the area where you were discussing on the scene? Yes. Okay. For the record, Your Honor, I have the video paused at six seconds into the interactive zoom. I'm going to put it on the full screen, get a little bit closer, and playing from that portion. Your Honor, the state would move states exhibit number 34 in evidence. Received. Nothing else, thank you. It's 435, we can at least start with cross, cross. All right. Now, Detective, you had a variety of responsibilities in this case, right? Uh, yes. So one of that was arriving at the scene and evidence collection. Yes. Uh, the other responsibility was submitting things into evidence. Yes. Such as inventorying information and things that are collected at the scene? Yes. Okay. Also, in making sure that you retain custody of critical items and evidence, right? Yes. Okay. And then you, fair to say, are the lead detective in this case? Uh, yes, I'm one of several detectives that have worked on this case. Okay. And as far as the evidentiary items, those are maintained at the property department of the MPD, right? That's correct. Okay. I don't, I don't mind if you move around because the state moves around, but you got to speak up a little so the jury and my reporter can hear you. Counsel, you mind? Go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, were you able to hear me before? Okay. All right. So I want to talk to you first about some of the evidence that you collected at the scene. All right. Okay, now, Detective, we already saw this photo, right? This is Exhibit 26? Yes. Okay, that's an open intoxicant in the front passenger side of the vehicle. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? That is an open intoxicant in the front passenger side of the vehicle, right? No, that's incorrect. That's a, uh, it's a can of White Claw in the uh, rear uh, driver's side door of the vehicle. Well, isn't White Claw an alcoholic beverage? Yes, but it was not in the front passenger door of the vehicle. Right, you said the front passenger I meant the rear passenger side. 
it, it's the rear driver's side, sir. Apologize, my mistake. I meant the front driver's side. Your Honor, it's not front anywhere. The rear driver's side. Correct. The rear driver's side. Okay, that is the rear driver's side door of the vehicle, right? Yes. Okay. My mistake. So that item of evidence, that wasn't inventoried in this case, right? No. But you had inventoried a juice bottle? Correct. The juice bottle I inventoried because it was found on the scene near the victim's body. Okay, but you had also, you said, had looked through the vehicle, right? Yes. You had searched the vehicle? Uh, yes. Okay. And this item wasn't tested in terms of any kind of DNA or anything like that, right? No. Exhibit 18, we already saw this as well, right? Yes. Okay, and this is a picture of the knife that was found in the front right pocket. Yes. As you stated, right? Yes. Okay, do you have the knife in front of you? I'm sorry? You don't. Okay. Exhibit 33, um, Detective, if I hand this to you, can you retrieve the knife out of the bag? Open that knife up. Can you tell us, to your knowledge, what the length of that knife is? To my knowledge, I'm not sure. Um, the overall length or the length of the blade? I mean, I would have to guess here without a ruler in front of me. The overall length of that knife. Is that the overall length of the knife? Including the well, blade? Well, the blade the or the blade and the handle. Either way, without a ruler, I wouldn't be guessing. Um, you can make a let, educated guess. Maybe 10 inches total length. It appears to be less than a foot. Okay. Can you give us a brief description of that knife? And uh, identify some of its features. Sure. It has a uh, it has a black handle. Um, there's a blade release uh, that seems to have like a a tension release that allows the blade to fold. And when it folds open, it locks into place. When it isn't locked into place, it, it loosely moves back and forth. Okay, and that blade, that's a serrated blade, right? The one, uh, yeah, the edge of the blade is serrated. Okay, can you tell us what kind of model that knife is? It appears on the blade itself, it's listed as Spyderco G2 Stainless. And detective, are you familiar with that kind of a knife? With a folding knife, yes. Um, what about that specific model? I have, I have never owned or handled this specific model of knife prior to this incident and today. Okay. So you would estimate it's maybe around 10 inches or so? Yeah, that's my estimate. And as far as the blade, uh, not the blade, the handle, can you give us an estimate of, about the grip there? Maybe five or six inches. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now... When these photographs were taken, like you just saw in Exhibit 18 and Exhibit 26, there were many photographs that were taken that night, right? You said there were many, I'm sorry? There were many photographs that were taken. Yes. Correct? Okay. And one of the things that you're going to do at a crime scene is kind of just understand um, the area, and that's why you had a map earlier, right? Yes. What about specific dimensions of the scene in terms of measurements? Yes, there's measurements taken uh, um, using a, uh, a laser measuring device.
Now, do you recall, Detective, uh, if any measurements were made at the scene in terms of the length or the width of the sidewalk, of that landing area? Not of the sidewalk or the landing area, no. Okay, but those scenes were obviously photographed, right? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna show you what's marked as Defense Exhibit 1. I mark this as Exhibit D1. Detective, do you recognize this? It's the landing at the top of the staircase where Mr. Clearman's body was found. Okay, and that is an act, fair and accurate representation of that specific landing, which is on Holton Street, correct? Yes, it, it appears relatively unchanged since the time of the incident. That's obviously because it's like a permanent concrete and metal structure, right? Yes. Okay. And on the night of the incident, the only difference would have been that there was Mr. Clearman's body, right? And the other evidence of uh, other items of evidence that were there, yes. Correct. So, did you have an opportunity to measure those dimensions there in that if you would describe that, well, how would you describe that area right there? as a landing at the top of a staircase. Okay, so did you have a chance to measure that landing? I did not measure that landing. Okay. If you had to estimate, estimate that distance, do you have any guess as to what the width and the length is? Because you were there. It's approximate like six foot by six foot square. Maybe. Okay. I'm going to show you what's marked as Defense Exhibit 2. Now, fair to say that this is a more close up photograph of that same landing? Looks like it's an overhead photograph. Okay, and that would be either the width or the length of one of the one of the sides of that landing. It looks like this is looking about north, or I'm sorry, south of it. So it'd be the east to west measurement from what I can tell from this photograph. Okay, now just looking at that picture, are you able to see that there's a ruler there? I can see that there's a ruler there. Okay, are you able to tell maybe approximately how many feet and inches that length is showing? I can't see any numbers on that ruler. Okay, if I were to zoom in, do you think that would help? I would imagine. start of the ruler that we're seeing where I'm pointing my finger, is that correct? Yes. All right, and the next, if, I, if we were to go the entire length of this photo, and apologize for the zoom there, approximately what do you see the, uh, the reading here at the very edge? I apologize, this is similar to an eye exam, but I, I think I'm seeing about 72 inches. Okay, so you had said about six feet. And then accounting for, if you were to measure between the metal portions that we see here, from where it's measured to, let's say, somewhere in the middle uh, between these, I'm going to zoom out. Zoom on right there. Right about here. I got to hold on. It 
It's looking like 67 to me. Okay. And that would be one of the one of the edges. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Did you have the chance, um, <clears throat> excuse me, to determine whether that area is a perfect square or if it's uh, a rectangle? I did not measure it to see what its dimensions were. Okay. Okay. Now, now at the scene, there was some clothing that was recovered, right? From, and let me be more specific, from Mr. Clearman's body? So at the scene, Mr. Clearman's body was, tra from the scene, Mr. Clearman's body was transported by the Milwaukee County Medical Examiner to their office. Okay. And I did not take any clothing from Mr. Clearman's person at the scene. All right, so you had no actual role in those items of evidence that may have been retrieved from Mr. Clearman's body, right? Correct. Okay. Now, I want to go back to some of the other exhibits that you saw earlier. For example, exhibit number three right here. You had testified about this. Can you just briefly refresh your memory what that is? Uh, this is just a scene uh, photograph based on the uh, evidence markers being stacked the way they are. It would have been at the beginning of the scene investigation because they haven't been placed anywhere. And there's some lighting that is being employed to illuminate that area, right? Yes. Okay, what, can you tell us what kind of lighting is used in these situations? Uh, a flash from a camera, a camera flash. Okay. What kind of camera is that? Is that specifically meant to photograph in the dark? I don't know. Okay. I didn't take the photographs or use the camera, and I don't know which camera was used. And right here in Exhibit 7, There's also a camera flash that's being used to show the staircase, right? Yes, there's so. Now, you were there that night, and so the staircase was very dark, right? It wasn't illuminated. There, there wasn't any lighting going up and down the staircases, uh, and it was already after about 8 p.m. that day. Okay. So it was dark? Yes. Just a few more questions, Councilor Rollins, if I would Now, you were there. Did you use your flashlight at all in this process? I, I believe I used a flashlight at some point during that investigation. All right. Now, we took a look at Exhibit 84. And this is going to be the scene, uh, scene sketch, or a, maybe a map to be more specific. Is that right? Yes. OK. Uh, do you know how this map was produced or what was used? Yes, uh, uh, Google Maps, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a screen captured image of a Google map of that intersection. OK. So it's a Google map, is that right? Yes. All right, now this map right here, this is specific to what we saw in the video. Is that right? Uh, it, it's specific to the video, the scene investigation. Yes. So what I mean to say is that, that map depicts the locations 
of what we saw in video number one and video number two just now, right? It does. Now, there was, from based on what you testified, an, an earlier incident that was right before what we saw on video number one, which was the punch, right? Yes. Okay. You weren't able to determine where that occurred, right? No, it, it occurred near the intersection of Brady Street and Holden Street. I'm talking, okay, so let me be more specific. I was just referring to the previous incident before the punch, right? Oh, I, I misunderstood you. I thought you were referring specifically to the punch that, that we watched on video. I apologize. No, I'm talking about what occurred before that. Okay. Right? You were aware that there was an incident that occurred before that, right? Uh, yes. Okay, and you had learned that in the investigation when you were there um, on the ground. I was briefed um, during the scene investigation that there was there was something that happened prior to the punch and prior to the shooting. So when was this map drawn up? Or, or maybe more specifically, if it was taken from Google, when was that extracted from Google? Um, this, w this specific Google image map would have been Within, within the past week in preparation for trial. Okay. So when it comes time to investigating a case, right, like when an incident occurs, your office or the department, they do the scene sketch, right? Yes. What other tools do they use to kind of understand the entire area that's at issue? Well, um, being physically present, observing uh, that that scene um, outside of satellite overhead images, I'm not sure I, I fully understand your question about understanding the scene as All you're, right, you're there. The, the question was a little vague. Why don't we take it up tomorrow? Detective, you can step down. It's 4.55. We're going to break for today. <clears throat> for the jury... Um, you've heard the rules uh, and regulations, so to speak, related to the trial. As I asked you yesterday, I'm going to ask again that you not watch any TV or any reports about this case over the course of tonight, tomorrow, the next few days. I'm sure there will be coverage of the case. Please don't watch or view any reporting uh, on any either station or Facebook or YouTube or anywhere you might come across anything. Please don't. Uh, view or observe any of that, number one. Number two, please don't deliberate this case. Don't discuss it among yourselves. Please don't discuss anything with your family, your friends, relatives. Anything you might want to discuss about this case is, is off limits. So don't discuss anything about what you've heard in evidence. Again, the lawyers, the witnesses, myself, no conversations about this case whatsoever. Again, importantly, don't do any research either. Don't look things up. No research on terms or anything related to this case on, again, online, on your phone, on Google, or whatever. We're going to try to start tomorrow between 8.30 and 8.45 at the latest, so I'm going to ask that you're back here around 8.15 or 8.20. Uh, my bailiffs will escort you out, uh, explain to you where you need to be back here in my jury room for tomorrow. Please be back, as I said, about 8.15 or 8.20. Uh, I don't have anything else on my calendar tomorrow or Friday. So we'll devote all of the next two days to witnesses and testimony. If you have any questions, that my bailiff know uh, on the way out. Otherwise, we'll see you tomorrow around 8.15 or 8.20. Everybody else can remain seated until the jury leaves, please. You can leave the notebooks in the chair. You can step down, detective. 
All right, it's 5 o'clock. We're in recess for today. I'll see the lawyers back at 820. We'll try to start as close to 830 as possible. If we need to discuss anything, it can be briefly, and it can be briefly tomorrow morning. We're in recess for today. Thank you. Off the record.